hey guys, welcome to Summer Paps. I'm Dave Alban. You might remember me from last time when we did one of our videos. And today, we're going to be jumping into some fun little object lesson sort of stuff. Uh, as you notice, I have my hiking bag here. And what uh, the next number of episodes are going to entail is a bunch of little object lessons. All right, so they're going to be these short little clips, uh, not going to be like a longer kind of sermon, but just uh, something that's going to help us better understand God's truth. So if you could bow your heads from with me, we're going to pray and then jump right in. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Lord, just to share your, your truth and your word um, with the people watching. I pray, Lord, that you'd open their hearts, uh, Lord, to your word. I pray, Father, for um, I bless my words, Father God. Give me encouragement and strength to speak your word clearly. And we just give all this to you in your name. Amen. So this summer, I have strived to be an outdoorsman, uh, specifically in the areas of hiking and camping. It's actually been a couple summer kind of thing. Um, it's, and uh, I thought it would, I thought it appropriate today, uh, in, the, in this setting with you, uh, to have some object lessons that relate to camping and hiking. And in general, our love of the outdoors. Along with what God has been teaching me this summer through these activities. So, as a history teacher by trade, I've always admired the courageous spirit of those who set forth for unknown lands and uncharted waters. Whether it be the early explorers looking for new trade routes or the religiously oppressed seeking the pro a promised land, history is loaded with such stories. Stories that we admire, heroes we lift up, whose attributes we find ourselves attempting to emulate. In the Bible, we find equally admirable stories, whether it be uh, Abraham leaving his country for a, an unknown land, Moses leading the people of Israel through a desolate wilderness, eventually to Jesus himself as he went 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness without food or water as he fought off the assaults of the enemy. To the moments in the ministry of Christ where he called his disciples away to the wilderness to rest, we can all resonate with at least one of these wilderness stories because God has planting some, planted something deep in the human heart a desire to embark on a quest of its own. And that quest is the pursuit of understanding the miracle of miracles and the amazing realization that God saved anyone. But our journey, our process, does not stop at a heartfelt prayer of salvation. God calls us higher to the, to the lifetime journey of living it out daily. Some may question the emphasis here on journey or, quote, process that consumes the rest of our saved lives, but here are some verses that I hope will bring this point across more adequately. And after we kind of work through this intro, we're going to jump into sort of the first two objects of this object lesson. So the first, uh, first uh, passage I'd like you guys to turn to with me is in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. It says, uh, this is from the new NASB, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Proverbs 16, 9. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And then, a larger passage for today that will kind of lead into now our, uh, our first two object lessons is from Matthew 7, 13 through 14. It says, and this is, I believe, NIV, enter through the narrow, enter, sorry, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The Christian life is a journey. Accepting salvation is easy because it costs God so much. But God doesn't leave us in spiritual immaturity. He calls us to work out what he has worked in. He calls us to go forth and disciple others. He calls us on a journey, one that is beyond our own strength. But where God leads, he provides, and he has equipped us for the road ahead. As with any journey, we first need to take inventory on what we will need to be successful. So imagine with me, if you will, that the Christian life is a hike along the entire length of the Appalachian Trail. Now, just so you know, this is a very long trail. It actually extends from Maine to Georgia. So by no means am I saying that you need to go hike this to understand this object lesson. If you do, kudos to you. That's awesome. But needless to say, for such a journey, it seems we will be needing a lot of things. One of the first things we need is a bag. So you probably noticed when we first started off, I came in with my big hiking bag here, okay? So this bag symbolizes life and the tools inside of it, inside all of life experiences for which we make our decisions. And you probably noticed, you know, this thing's kind of full. Like this actually has, this has some weight to it right here. Uh, hike eight miles with like uh, 50, 60 pounds of this. 
Uh, you definitely will be feeling it the next day, guaranteed. So, this bag looks really heavy and has accumulated a lot of stuff over time. That seems that we will need to carry quite a burden and that the journey is going to be super hard. Let's see if maybe there are a few things we can do without. So the first, first couple object lessons, of course the bag was one. Think about, for example, uh, we all carry a bag in life. So imagine with me for a moment that in the proverb in, your, uh, in, in life, imagine a metaphorical bag. And inside of it is your dreams, your hopes, uh, your sorrows, your griefs, your good moments, your bad moments. And you've been accumulating this for years and years and years. Obviously, if you're younger, your bags probably doesn't have as much stuff, but all the same. Um, so our first, so the, the bag is the first object lesson, <clears throat> representing the tools and the burdens, the good and the bad, and everything in between that we carry through life. The next two, um, the next part of this, of this little lesson here is the planning of the journey, which is we have a map and we have a compass right here, okay? Um, that we will need. So the first thing we would need to establish on any journey is where we are and where we are going. For this, we would need a map. So we have our map here. With this, we can figure out where we are starting and where we are hoping to get to. We would also need a compass represented by this to let us know if we are going the right direction or if we are lost to help us get back on track to find the trail again. Then again, how do we know we have the right map, as there are millions in the world? And sometimes compasses actually don't work correctly or can be thrown off. In our world today, people like to follow their own moral compasses. So imagine with me for a second, this is sort of like that compass in, uh, that Jack Sparrow has in Pirates of the Caribbean, where it points to what he desires most, which is like most people's compasses, actually. Um, so instead of actually pointing to true north, the compass instead points to what you perceptionally want north to be for your own life. So essentially, you have a compass that's rigged to take you down a path of your own life that you want versus the path that you really need, right? So in our world today, people like to follow their own moral compasses and write their own maps and believe that they are the, quote, masters of their fate, the captains of their souls. That's probably a popular quote we've seen thrown around. But putting faith in those vain philosophies only leads off the trail into certain disaster. Perhaps we can replace these things with the following. So let's put these things off to the side. And let's replace it with Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. So we don't need our own moral compass. We don't need a map of our own writing. All we really need for the first part of this journey is to trust God that he will lead us on the right path. To not lean on what we think we know, because what we think we know is actually probably not really... Um, a good reflection of what is actually true. It's typically tainted by our biasness, by our feelings, how, how we're doing that day. So we lean not on our own understanding, and then we acknowledge him. God, you're the trail master here. You've got to guide me. And then he makes the path straight as he guides us on that. So stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll get into some more object lessons from the bag. See you soon.